Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. And I have a guest here today who I know everyone has been waiting to hear from because it's a question that comes up all of the time and it's how do you find love again after divorce? So let me introduce you to Sony Pelty. Sony is a dating and relationship coach and host of the Limitless Love podcast. She helps powerful women reconnect with their divine feminine energy and cultivate more sensuality, playfulness, and abundance in their romantic life. Sony's mission is to help smart, successful, professional women in attracting a committed, adoring partner who will meet them on every level. I love that so much. She believes that we can have it all, including love too. She's a successful entrepreneur who, at the age of 47, created a heart-centered business and created a beautiful love life on her own. Her journey to love has been incredible, and she has learned so much in the last several years and now helps women all over the world attract their soulmate love with the same tools and techniques that she used to create her own soulmate match. So welcome. Thank you so much, Renee, for having me. I am I'm pumped for this conversation because at right before we hit recording, I was just telling you that that might be one of the most asked questions that I have. I get I get the how do you know at the beginning? And then after the divorce is complete, it's like, how do I find love again? How do I trust myself to mm-hmm. pick a partner who's a match again? Mm-hmm. Um, and how do I trust somebody else? And especially if they've been burned. So this question, this, this interview is just, is going to be great. So let's start with your story because you were married for 22 years and then you got divorced. So let's, let's kind of pick it up right from there. You're at the point where you're divorced and how are you feeling in that moment? Do you think that there's hope or a possible love match out there for you? So um, I, like I had mentioned to you earlier, I was actually got married when I was 19 and I was in that marriage for 22 years. And it was a tumultuous um, relationship from pretty much the get go. And yet I didn't have the courage in me Mm -hmm. to um, step out even though I was financially secure I had an amazing job and career I just didn't have the courage to just leave the marriage and step out just Mm -hmm. for the fear of what my life would look like after yeah so my kids were uh, 15 and 10 at the time when I got divorced and actually my son was the catalyst of for getting this whole process started so what did it look like for me when I got divorced it was not beautiful Mm. (laughs) it was I felt like I was swimming in these murky waters Mm. and you know I when I did get divorced I knew I wanted love I knew that I wanted to be in a deep loving romantic relationship and at some point I did want to get married but um, I never dated ever because it was an arranged marriage and um for the first time when i was 42 i found myself in the dating world and you throw in online dating in the mix and it's like oh my god i don't know what i'm doing so was it fun or was it overwhelming and like horrific so actually it was kind of fun but um i couldn't sustain a relationship like it was few months here and there and I went from one dating relationship to the Mm -hmm. next and all I would get to hear was you're a nice woman I'm just not there yet I'm not just feeling it for you just a combination of statements of that sort and um yeah I'm not ready and maybe I'm sure there's somebody better out there for you things like that and I didn't know what was going on like why none of these relationships were moving past like three months some of them maybe even fizzling out after a month and like all these men coming on so strong in the beginning and then all of a sudden like nothing so this went on for about three years or two and a half years and then I'm like no something needs to change I like I said you know I know that I wanted to be married again I know I wanted to be in this real romantic loving relationship so I started looking up coaches started looking up 
you know, who I could work with, relationship coaches. And I had read a few blogs here and there and read, you know, some books, but it was until I started working on myself, um, my self-worth, my self-esteem, nothing changed. Nothing in my dating world changed. It was just like me pulling myself out of one situation and just planting myself in the other situation. And then just all of a sudden expecting things to change. But I'm just showing up as the same person over and over again. And I made every mistake in the book. <laughs> like what? Give us one. So like chasing men. Yeah. Paying on dates. Uh, being the social director of the relationship. Just basically, you know, we live in a masculine world. So it's like approaching a relationship like you tackle a project at work. Mm. It all full on in my masculine and that's what I teach women that in romantic relationships it's a balance it's a dance of the masculine and feminine yeah so you have to surrender and surrendering is not necessarily a bad word I know we think that surrendering means just like giving up and you have no control no mm -hmm. it's just giving over letting the things unfold not trying to control every situation every outcome <laughs> So I have a question. When you said that um, everything was the same until you changed, are you talking about like changing who you are for someone or is it a different kind of change or shift? Okay, so it's not changing yourself for someone else. It's basically grounding your, starting to love yourself. So the crux of my work is about the woman. It's not about finding love again. It's about finding, falling in love with yourself. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I tolerated 22 years of a toxic marriage was I had very low self-esteem. I know it sounds shocking for a confident woman who has a corporate job. And at that time I wasn't, wasn't into coaching, but um, you have this confidence to go to work, to bring money home, to do your everyday stuff. Right. But that innate internal confidence, this sense of grounding in your self-worth, like you're bathing in self-love, that's missing. And that's why I couldn't step out because my identity was not mine. Mm. It belonged to other people defined me. And when I say changing, it's basically coming home to yourself. And how do you do that? It's baby steps. It's just starting to love yourself and self-love. I thought I loved myself, but you know, you eat organic food. We go for manicure, pedicure, spa days, you know, work out, eat healthy food. It's more than that. It's about slowly and gradually setting boundaries, mm -hmm. learning to say, no, I was a big people pleaser. Yeah. So starting to not do that, learning to say no, setting healthy boundaries. What I will and will not tolerate. That's how I started doing one thing at a time. And, you know, like I said, for two and a half years, when I knew the things were not changing for me, so I knew how I was showing up wasn't working. So why not try something different to see how it changes? Mm -hmm. And when I started implementing um, the self-love practices and really grounding, spending time with myself, not being in this lack, like, adopting the principle that single is awesome, just basically enjoying the here and now and just, you know, not trying to fit in and not trying to people please, just being in love with myself, getting intimate with myself. I love that. I tell people all the time after their divorce, they should date themselves. Yes. Take them out on dates and yes. spend, really reconnect and learn how to right, spend right. time alone. Right. So why don't, um, let me back it up a little bit. And can you just explain what a relationship coach is and what they do? So what I do is when we, when I coach women, coach women to have this amazing relationship with themselves. So the bulk of the work is us trying to basically connect with 
back with ourselves, have these beautiful, amazing relationships with ourselves. And once we have that, then the man just comes along. So it's not that we don't work on that piece. So yes, I do talk about the nuts and bolts of dating, how to show up in the dating world, how Mm -hmm. to online date, how to create this amazing profile, because there's so many women out there, right? So how do you stand out? How do you stand out in this pool of other women that a man's like, oh, I want to connect with her. I want to reach out to her. So yes, I do, we do work with all those kinds of things, but the basic work, the groundwork is self-love. Hmm. Learning about yourself, getting intimate with yourself, a lot of mindset work too, because I know for me, I had a lot of limiting beliefs around men around relationships you know like all good men are taken men are intimidated by my success Um, Mm -hmm. men only want sex you know online is full of jerks and I've met my husband online (laughs) me too yeah so it's it's all those things right so reframing busting those beliefs and intimacy is huge so just you know getting intimate with yourself busting those intimacy fears and removing the blocks to love that we have inside um You know, it's, um, I used to have a certain kind of men that I would fall for, bad boys. Ah, yeah. And good guys would feel boring. Yeah. So how do you, like having an open heart and dating every man out there? So you're remarried now. And did your husband fall into your typical stereotype or was he outside of that? Yes, he was very much outside of that. So... (laughs) So the other concept that I teach women is, I call it carousel dating, just because I'm all about playfulness and fun. And so what the concept is, you date several men at the same time. So you're not getting laser focused on one man, because men do that too. Till you're not in a committed relationship, till the man doesn't tell you, um, you know, hey, if you want to be my girlfriend or... um, you know, we are in a committed relationship, you continue to date several men. And unless, until one gives you the relationship that you want, whether it's marriage or long-term relationship, whatever it is that you desire, and it feels good to you, you continue to date several men. So that adds its own element of fun because you, you heal that way. So I think dating is free therapy. Men mm-hmm. ask you out, they pay, pay for for you and you will get triggered by certain actions and certain circumstances, certain situations will trigger you. And then you heal those triggers. I healed a lot while I was dating my husband. Interesting. And I let, instead of pushing it away, I let those situations heal me because if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been with him today because he was not my type at all. So like I said before, right? Dating with an open heart and dating all kinds of men, even if they are not your type, because that's how you're healing. You're learning to trust yourself. You're learning to trust your intuition. We, we find we often, what we do is we are okay with our good feelings. When something feels uncomfortable, we try to push it away. Mm -hmm. We don't sit with it. We don't let those emotions, those feelings heal us. Do you believe that there is a, in soulmates, that there's one match for everyone? Um, not really. I don't, but <laughs> every person is in your life for a season, for a reason. Mm-hmm. So I, what my philosophy is focus on the now and not to think forever. Just live in the moment, yeah. enjoy, have fun. I love that. Yeah. And so, and I think that that's important because usually post-divorce, someone, people often quickly jump into something else because they're trying to find someone opposite of their ex, or they're trying to fix their loneliness. And, and I think it's easy to fall like, you know, so deep into another relationship that ends up sort of exploding out the other end. And, and I think that this is a great remedy and how to avoid that is just by dating a lot of people so that you're not falling into that trap. Right, right. And not feeling guilty about it because like yeah. I said, men do that. And also 
it's going to be an it's non-sexual dating so you're not like if you're dating five guys at the same time or three let's say you're not going around sleeping with all of them so you don't yeah. have to feel this guilt you don't have to feel this oh my god i'm doing something immoral or i'm doing something wrong yeah like it's 2021 you just can have fun. some fun too yeah, absolutely fun, you know? i love that <laughs> yeah so you uh, speak about tips that you have to attract your perfect match. Can you share some of those? So, yes. So I feel like when you come, um, when you show up in the dating world as a high value woman, now I don't mean that anybody is low value or anything like that, but there are certain dynamics of romantic relationships. Um, and when we follow those, then it becomes easier to attract the right man. Uh, yes, we will encounter, you know, jerks or douchebags here and there, but then we know how to sift through them and weed them out. Mm -hmm. So like I said, a woman never chase a man. Um, show up in the dating world as in, in your feminine. So um, I'm not sure if you talk much about feminine energy in your work, but... Uh, in romantic relationships, when a woman, if a woman desires, so uh, both men and women have masculine and feminine energy, mm -hmm. right? So masculine is all about doing, achieving, yep. protecting, providing. And then the feminine is all about being easy, receiving, relaxing, leaning back, um, just enjoying, just being, right? Mm -hmm. So when a woman shows up in her feminine energy, especially if she wants to be cherished and loved and adored, if you just surrender and be, and then just enjoy the experience, let it unfold, that helps you attract the right man who, mm -hmm. when you let the man be a man in the relationship and do all the heavy lifting and do the work, that feels attractive to a man. Interesting. So it's fascinating to me because I interviewed, um, it hasn't been dropped yet, but a man's dating coach. He's like the real life hitch. And uh -huh. it's so fascinating because he is saying the same thing, but in the, you know, in the reverse and how to show up for a date and how to, to be the leader in the, on the date. And, and it's almost like you guys are talking the same exact talk, but from different perspectives. So it's, you know, it's really, it's, it's right. interesting. Right. And then just be your feminine self, like, you know, um, be that, be flirty, be um, not, I don't feel like full on masculine flirting. It's like just being that smile. Uh, so men don't have access to our femininity, like on an everyday basis. And when I say that, like feminine frills, it's like, oh, you know, just our, oohs and ahs and you know a tilting of our head and just being playful um that's very very enticing to men mm -hmm. and like i said not not want just be able to receive without mm -hmm. the need to give back oh he paid today so i should pay the next time it's okay. That's how men connect it's not a 50 50 it's not a um friendship this is a romantic connection that we are trying to build. So interesting. I love it. Um, how do you respond when a man doesn't return a phone call uh, or doesn't call you a couple days after you go out on a date? Ooh, what do you I do? That. I know. I stalked your Instagram page. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's, so when you are dating several men, and a man doesn't call you. So you have this full life, right? I talk about having a whole life, a balanced life where you have lots of fun stuff going on in your life. You have your work, you have your friends, you work out, you go travel, like you have a full life. So the man doesn't consume your whole mm. life. So if he is missing, you won't miss him because you're doing all these things. And when you're dating other men, you will get, you're getting other attention. So if he doesn't call, it's okay when he shows up, you don't have to be pissed about it. Like, oh, it's so wonderful to hear from you. Mm. So it's like distance and warmth. So let him take his time. If he doesn't want to show up for two days or three days, it's fine. But when he comes back, just welcome him because you know, you're not pissed, you're not irritated because you're having fun anyway. Mm. 
Interesting. And then I wonder if the the effect is that he's like, well, wait a second, I wasn't missed. She didn't notice that I didn't call. <laughs> there's, no, there's something there's some... called creating positive tension. Mm -hmm. This is what you're doing. So when you are with the man, you are lit up, excited, you're present, you're into him, mm -hmm. you're enjoying the conversation. You just, just basically lit up like a Christmas tree. But when your guys are away, then, then that's it. He's wondering what's going on in her life. Like, I'm not hearing as much from her. Like, what's going on? So that triggers his curiosity. He's like, oh, I need to reach out. Like, what is going on with her? I haven't heard from her. So it's like when you're together, you are present, fun, enjoying. But when you're away, you could care less. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> tension because when you're always available, when you are always there and you're there at a minute's notice, then they take you for granted, right? Oh, she's yeah. easy. She's accommodating. She's always available. So I don't have to plan ahead. I don't have to do X, Y, Z for her because she's always there. I don't have to make an effort. Mm -hmm. But when you create that positive tension, when you're not, um, you know, getting irritated if he sh doesn't show up for two days and then he's back and you're just like, oh, that's great. Nice to hear from you. Um, then he feels that pull. Oh my God. She, so basically we are creating a different experience for the man. The man um, wants to feel that experience of falling in love with you. <laughs> when you don't give them that experience, then they're like, oh, she's like somebody, this other person there. So like, we're like, like low key kind of I don't want to say manipulating, guiding, <laughs> guiding right. him to, to the behavior that you want. So, you know, it's not manipulation because you're trans, you ch you're transforming your life into this thing because it really doesn't matter, right? It, you have this confidence that the man who will, um, love you, who will give you everything that you desire is out there. And that's the other piece of work that I do. I focus uh, quite a bit on law of attraction. Yeah, I and, love that. Yeah, so it's that mm -hmm. that faith, that belief yeah, that yeah. the man that I desire, so it's all about getting crystal clear mm -hmm. on how you want to feel in a relationship, not having a physical checklist of tall, handsome, you know, mix, you know, whatever, six figure, seven figure, like a millionaire or whatever. Not Wears good time. shoes. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just having how you want to feel in the relationship. Mm. How do you want to experience life together? What will your life be like together? And then from that space, calling, knowing that this person is out there for yeah. me and I don't have to settle. Mm -hmm. Everything that I desire is out there for me. And trust your gut. I think that's an important yes. one. And I think like every person I talk to who, who is, ends up getting divorced, they're like, well, I didn't pay attention to my gut. Yes. You know, I'm like, oh, well, it will get better. And I mean, that's yes. so important. So when you're out there again, to really tap into that and pay attention. Right. And you cannot. So men show us everything. We just don't. We choose to ignore or not see or we think, oh, this is just minor. I can change it. He can change after we get married or whatever. It doesn't change. And we yeah. cannot change other people. We can change how we show up. Either we choose to tolerate or we choose to leave. Mm -hmm. We cannot change other, another person. All right. So what are women doing that are keeping them single? Ooh, like I said, being very masculine in their relationships, especially high performing women, powerful women, yeah. women entrepreneurs, boss babes, they show in the world of dating, like they're in the boardroom. Yeah. So that's yeah. huge. Just letting the man trusting that he will live up to your standards so if you like going to eat at fancy restaurants or you know expensive hotels or whatever giving him a chance not controlling because what happens is when we step up and we keep controlling um we are not giving him an opportunity to step us and show us his potential mm. Yeah. And I think that's a hard one because a lot of women, like you just mentioned, the, the whole laundry list who are bosses and entrepreneurs and business owners, like that's our default is to yeah. control and kind and, and strategize. And that's, so it's, it's hard. I think it's, it has to be a very intentional choice to right. not show up in the dating scene that same way. 
believe me, it was very hard for me too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I would think so. It's, I would say, I think like I'm married too. When I go home and sometimes I still am in those shoes and sometimes it's hard to switch that off. Right. Right. And then also I feel like, um, mindset has, has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Like I'll, we, we, we put an upper limit, like a glass ceiling. Oh, I have, I'm successful. I have everything working for me. Maybe I'm not meant for love. Maybe yeah. this is all the goodness that I'm meant for and knowing that no we are putting that ceiling on ours for ourselves yeah I mean that's the conversation goodness that's definitely the conversation I had with myself for a while you know it's like everything else is great but maybe this just in this area it's just not it's just not meant to be right right and again like not trying to um have somebody else fill that gap yeah fill up that loneliness for you you are your own source of happiness your own source of you know you have to fill your own life and then when the man comes along he just gets to join in your party and add to your happiness love that <laughs> that's the sound bite right there when the man comes along he just gets to join in your party, party. that's it love it <laughs> All right. So a little, a tiny little shift, but you talk about an awoken home rather than a broken home. Can you yes. explain a little bit what that yes, means? Yes, absolutely. So um, I feel that a lot, and I've seen it among my friends too. It's, we stay in a dead relationship for way too long. We feel we're doing it for our kids. We feel like, oh, what is the society going to think? Oh, what are my parents going to think? And especially from my culture, I'm Indian. And where I come from, it's not divorce is a stigma pretty much. Right. And especially getting divorced in your 40s and with kids, it's like, oh, she's doomed. She cannot, that's it. Her life is done. Um, so what I, what, why I say a woken home is because my son, was the catalyst for the divorce when it happened. Like my ex and I, we always knew that we may not be together once the kids moved to college. But I found out that I realized when my son came up to me after one horrific fight we had, um, and he came to me and said, mom, why, do you, why are you tolerating this behavior? Like, why do you want to live with him? And at that point, he was only 15, but I saw like my heart just swelled up. Like right now too, when I'm talking about it, I'm getting chills. It's like, all of a sudden I saw this mature young man standing in front of me. And basically it was like a cry for help from him that this is not helping us either. So go mom, like you don't have to be in this for us. Uh, it's so, so sometimes, powerful. Sometimes we feel that our kids will have, we don't know, we're uncertain of the life our kids are going to have. And people always say, oh, he or she, this child is from a broken home, yet they don't realize that what beautiful life they, they create um, when one parent takes the decision of stepping out of the marriage. And I'm not saying that if you just after divorce, just, you know, just fall off and then just, you know, just have this spiral that spiraling down. But like, I chose to work on myself and my kids saw something that they would have never experienced if I was still with my ex. All they would have seen was temper, yelling. There was physical and emotional abuse. Yeah. So, so that word broken home is not really, they come from a broken home, but they are so much aware of everything else that they could have never experienced had they still, had we still continued to be married. I love that. And we created I, a new, I created a new yeah. word for them. A new experience. Yes, there is a lot of possibilities outside of this. There is, it can be a better home and not a broken home. 
Uh, and kids know it's, you know, it's so heartbreaking when I hear someone stays because they're concerned about the kids because for everything that you just said. Right. And I really feel like I was using the kids as a shield, as an excuse, because I was scared of the unknown. Because even though I was in an abusive relationship that was familiar to me, that was safe, I knew how to handle it. I know it sounds kind of crazy, right? Not at all. <laughs> so no. it's, yeah, so it's like, we are so used to that. We can handle that circumstance, that situation. We don't know what's it going to be like, because it's unknown. It's unknown is always scary. So I have one final question for you, but before I do, um, how do people connect with you? Where do they find you? And of course, I'm going to put all of this in the show notes, but just um, lay it all out for us of how we can, can continue to watch your journey. Absolutely. I have my podcast, The Limitless Love with Sony Pelty, where I share all amazing nuggets of relationships, dating, everything. And I also have a Facebook Facebook group, a private Facebook group, Limitless Love. And um, my website has, I have blogs on there. So that is limitlesslovewithsony.com. Awesome. All right. So my final question then is what tip do you have for someone who says, I just don't know. I'm out of my divorce. It's so fresh. I don't know if I'll ever trust again. I don't know if I'll ever be happy. What message do you have for that woman? Just know that if the desire is there in you, it is meant for you. And start by connecting with yourself, just spending time with yourself, making yourself the focus and just having fun with yourself. And yeah, not, not trying to get caught up at, especially at the early stage when you're just fresh out of divorce. It's like not to get caught up in thinking, oh, will I find someone? Yes, if you really want that, it will happen. Just be with yourself, pamper yourself, love yourself, give yourself that full time and attention and devotion to yourself. Oh, I love that. And then date all of the men at the same yes, time. <laughs> absolutely. Have fun. <laughs> Sony, thank you so much. Um, this is not the last time you're coming on here because just your energy is awesome. And I love what you do. And it's such an inspiration that you can find love again, no matter what. Absolutely. Yes. And thank you so much. I had so much fun talking to you, Renee. <laughs>